Hello and welcome to my dungeon. When working on my Death in Space adventure, I noticed that many RPGs are set at the edges of civilizations. Be it a keep on the borderlands, a post-apocalyptic wasteland, or pirate-infested dark Caribbeans. And I wondered, why? This video is kind of a second part to last week's video, why we play in the ruins of civilizations. In that video I go more into the literal and cultural origins of Dungeons and & Dragons. And while I don't think that you need to watch that video to enjoy this one, I'll leave a link up here in case you're interested. Today I want to focus on storytelling and gameplay reasons. Most popular role-playing games focus on daring action and adventure for a group of two to six players, so they need a setting to accommodate that type of story. And civilization is the antithesis to adventure. Civilization is about order. It has instructions and mechanism to deal with chaos that is the seed for adventure. The police, fire brigade and an army of bureaucrats works to keep things as orderly as possible. Orderly and boring. Now that's good and all to live a peaceful life, yet we crave a little chaos and adventure in our lives. Something to get the heart beating and make you feel alive. So to at least play stories of daring action and adventure, we have to move outside of the well-regulated boundaries of civilization. There are several ways to do it, but maybe the easiest is to literally move outside the borders. Set your adventure around to keep in the borderlands, at the very edge of civilization. Just a few hours of travel will bring you to the literal caves of chaos, where danger and adventure waits. Notice here that you are still near to civilization. The keep offers a safe haven to return to after an adventure. Somewhere to sell the treasure you gained, recover from your wounds and prepare for the next adventure. And that is something that civilization is good for, even in an adventure story. If you venture further outside the boundaries, you'll have to take a piece of civilization with you in order to survive the chaos of the wild and unknown. You'll want your supplies of weapons, armor, tools, rations, mules to carry your stuff and hired mercenaries to protect your camp. Go even further, you'll eventually need an entire ship and crew, or better yet three. This greatly complicates the logistics of adventuring, which is not something every gamer enjoys, but I personally find it interesting. That is one of the reasons why I like the Sumbadum setting. With its treasure and danger-filled forest of Davoka that offers more treasure and more adventure, the further away from civilization you go, the further you travel into the dark forest. This is even true of a survival sandbox game like Valheim, only you have to build the civilization yourself. That is the first goal of such games before you do anything else. Build a bonfire, build shelter, build tools. Eventually you'll have a base of operations. And from that safe haven of civilization, you will venture forth into the unknown to bring back more and better materials, to build up your base until it becomes a mighty castle or a shining city. I've been playing a lot of Valheim recently. There are other ways to move away from the safe order of civilization as well. Time, for example. No empire is eternal. Move your setting a bit back or forth in time and you find yourself in a world of wilderness, monsters and barbarians, or in ruins, fighting wasteland bandits. And in these settings too, you will have your havens of civilization. 
be it Sanctuary Hills or the Mother's Village or the Iron Ring. That is an aspect I love about the Death in Space setting. While there used to be a universal civilization, fueled by gems and jump drives, it has all come crumbling down. And now, in the ruins of that intergalactic civilization, once again there's chaos and adventure. It also works to pull the plot and the story down to the human scale. Especially in science fiction, civilization makes everything big. Massive spaceships with thousands of crew, mega cities with billions of inhabitants, and huge fleets with millions of ships. These scales make it hard for a single individual, even a small group of two to five players, to have any meaningful influence on the outcome of any conflict. This is especially noticeable in sci-fi, but you get that in medieval fantasy as well. If you play on the scale of kingdoms with armies of hundreds and thousands of soldiers, it's hard for the individual knight to shine. That's not to say that you can't have adventures within the borders of civilization. Quite the contrary. You can have your Three Musketeers, your X-Files and your Blade Runners. What these stories do to introduce chaos and adventure to the heart of civilization and to bring the scale to the human level is not a shift in time or space, but a shift in culture. Your story can be set in the middle of the Thirty Year or Cold War, with the fate of nations depending on the actions of two to six people, but these will be stories of court intrigue and espionage. These stories focus on the subcultures where the individual can still influence the outcome of the story, at least in our imagination with the suspension of disbelief. Or your story focuses on the fringes of the civilized world. You follow detectives that investigate cases so outlandish that they can't hope for support from the police. Here you'll find your Call of Cthulhu or your X-Files. Or maybe the story takes place in a supernatural or criminal underworld, focusing on a pack of werewolves or on a gang of edge runners. The shift outside of the main culture of a civilization introduces chaos, be it through magic and monsters or through crime. And with chaos comes the opportunity for adventure. Also, the size of the subculture and the relative powers the members of that subculture have within this subculture pulls the scale down to the individual, the small group and the human. Perfect story material for two to six players. And that's all I have for today. I'm sure you can think of many examples outside of this pattern and I'd be interested to learn what kind of stories these games can tell. Or maybe you realize in what creative way a game introduces chaos into a civilized world you have not thought of before. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I bid you farewell until we shall meet again.